Chris Hearn. Hearns won this title against Wilfred Benitez back in 1982. No moss, no moss, but Roberto Duran has atoned for that, beating Davy Moore and then lasting 15 rounds against marvelous Marvin Hagler. How will he do against this man, Thomas Hearns? Will he be the hitman again on this night? This is a chance for Hearns now to move into the big money fight, and just prior to the start of it, Duran was not like his usual self. He sat down in the corner. Generally, he dances around the ring as an opponent comes up, trying to taunt and intimidate. But that was not the case on this warmish evening in Las Vegas. So coming up now, we'll have Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy with the call. We'll have the first round here from Las Vegas. It is Hearns against Duran in just a moment. at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas for the WBC World Super Waterweight Championship. Roberto Duran and Thomas Hearn. Let's join our ring announcer now, Chuck Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout of the evening is sanctioned by the Better State Athletic Commission, Art Lurie, Chairman, and by the World Boxing Council, Jose Suleiman, President. The officials are signed by those two governing bodies. The judges are Newton Campos of Brazil, Harry Gibbs of England, and Hans Schessbert of Belgium. The timekeeper is Charlie Ross. Counting at the knockdown, Jane Broadfoot. And the referee is Carlos Padilla. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the Super Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing, in the red corner, the challenger, fighting out of Panama City, Panama, weighing an even 154 pounds. He has a professional record of 77 wins, 5 defeats, with 58 knockouts. He has held three world titles in his career. He is a man with the hands of stone, Roberto Duran! And in the blue corner, WBC Super Welterweight Champion, fighting out of Detroit, Michigan, weighing in 153 and one quarter pounds. His professional record consists of 38 wins, one defeat, with 32 KOs. No longer is he called the Motor City Cobra. He has returned as Thomas, the Hitman. Thomas Hearns and Roberto Duran, effectively two champions at 154 pounds. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for tonight's bout. Thomas Hearns came in right at the limit of 154 pounds as we see the referee Carlos Padilla giving the instructions and Roberto Duran at 153 and a quarter. Of course, the reach advantage goes to Thomas Hearns with 78 inches to 67 inches for Roberto Duran. The age factor, well, could be one. Thomas Hearn, certainly in his prime at 25, however, has had only two fights in the last two years because of hand injuries. Roberto Duran will be 33 years old tomorrow. The fact that he's had to come down from weight up to close to 190 pounds to get to 154, the older he gets, the tougher that task must prove, and the effect of it over 12 rounds may be seen tonight. Round number one. Carlos Padilla is the referee. He will not score. Harry Gibbs from England. Newton Campos from Brazil. Hans Schlesberg from Belgium will be the scoring judges on the 10-point must system. Nine or fewer points to the loser of the round. Tim Roberto Duran has a real heavy beard. In most states, uh, that's illegal. I'm surprised that uh, Emmanuel Stewart didn't complain to the commission about that. Well, Thomas Hearns has a real light beard. So, well, <laughs> so far, the beard championship has gone to Roberto, but... I, your point is quite uh, well taken, Gil. Uh, we'll see if it has an effect that you can pick up in terms of uh, Hearn landing his blows to the face of Duran. A little tentative here in the early going, and uh, Duran having a little problem with the canvas in this early going has already slipped a little bit twice. Ninety degrees. 
at the time of the bell for the first round here in Las Vegas with the sun starting to sink in the west. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy, round one scheduled for 12, remember, under WBC rules, a 12-round title bout. Tim, uh, Tommy Hearns should be working that jab overtime. Instead, he's looking to land the big bomb, and he, he landed land a good right hand. A good right hand to the ear of Duran that sent him back into the rope. Of course, the macho Duran quickly saying, it didn't hurt me. There's that left jab of Hearns backing up Roberto Duran. But Duran is making a mistake, Tim, of standing straight up. He's fighting a tall guy. He should get lower. He's not going to be able to reach up to Hearns. He's got to slip the punches, get underneath him. Can't get his head moved back with that jab, or he's really going to get nailed. Under a minute to go, and Duran slipped. However, there is blood over the right, the left oh, eye, pardon me, the left eye of Roberto Duran. A slice that looked at like it's on the eyelid in the corner of the left eye of Roberto Duran. And Hearns is backing Roberto Duran up at will. A solid right, and down goes Duran. Duran is on the canvas. It looks stunned. Hit to his feet, but he's staggering. He's hurt. Hey. Approaching the 22nd mark remaining when we're in round number one. He's bothered by that cut eye, Tim. He's very seldom ever been cut in a fight. Hearns lands a combination, and Duran waving at him to come at him, but meanwhile taking punishment. Down he goes again. That's, that's going to save him, Tim. That's by, by the fact that he went down, the bell is going to ring. Got quickly to the to his feet at the end of the first round. And he must finish the eight count, and there is the bell that ends round number one. The bell does not end the round, and he went to the neutral corner. Roberto Duran went to the neutral corner. He did not realize where his corner is, so Duran is in deep trouble. Thomas Hearn with a vicious attack. Let's look at that first knockdown, Tim. Here's Roberto Duran standing straight at the stick, right in front of Tommy Hearn. Hearns is measuring him out, weaves a little bit, and bang, right on the chin with a good right hand. Tremendous shot by Thomas Hearns, and he immediately had Duran in trouble again, knocking him back into the ropes, and Duran goes down one more time in this first round. Tim, he knows he has a hurt tail, and he's going for folks, going caution to the wind, and just throwing punches and punches. Duran is really in trouble now, Tim, leaning back, trying to get away. Where can he hide? He can't. Those punches are coming fast as lightning. A tremendous body punch, another body punch, flips him right off his feet, Tim, and down again. Here comes Tommy Hearns out now, Tim. He knows he's still in trouble. He's going to try to finish him off right now. We're now into round number two. Thomas Hearns looks quickly to the center of the ring. A cut on the left eyelid of Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran can survive the knockdown to round one. Remain to be seen. He looks still a little wobbly to me, Jim. Yeah, he's still straight up in the air, Tim. You have to get low when you fight a fighter like Tommy Hearn. Good left and a right behind it by the champion. Duran in trouble again in his corner. Has not hung on at all. Now, finally, he grabs Hearn. Hearn's got several free shots with Roberto. He's wobbly, Tim. His legs are still wobbly. He's trying to cover up. Another solid right hand by Thomas Hearns in a combination. The referee Padilla watching. There he's up in the air again. Duran just playing on instinct, though, Gil. He's just hanging up. Big that's right it. hand. That's, that's it, Tim. I hear him. You right fall hand. forward. The fight's over, Tim. A huge right hand by Thomas Hearn. Right to the cheekbone of Roberto Duran, and it is all over. A second round knockout for the hitman, Thomas Hearn, who said he would not. Did, Tim, we've said so many times before, a fighter can go into the ring and he can age overnight. And that's exactly what happened to Roberto Duran. He didn't have it from the opening bell. Back live here in New York, we're standing by to talk live with the hitman who is back, Thomas Hearns. And up in Boston, you can see the man he might be fighting next, marvelous Marvin Hagler. We'll look at some replays of Hearns' greatest triumph and we'll look ahead with the champions when we return after this. Quick. Hey, Von, I, I thought the speed with which you attacked Duran, it struck me that I don't think I've ever seen you quite that quick. Even in that great fight against Sugar Ray Leonard, I don't think you were as fast as you were in the first round. I felt that I was very quick there, Brad, Bert, in that first round, uh, because my task was to move to Duran, take, 
put the pressure on Durant, make him back up. I knew once I could get him back, that he can't fight back it up. You know, Gil Clancy made the observation that he never could solve your size. He never could get down on a crouch and get in on the inside and attack you from there. No, I was, I made it very difficult for him to get inside. Um, each time he moved forward, started to come forward, I put the left hand out there and make him fight the arms. He had to fight the arms in order to get to it. Now, we're going to show the knockout again in the second round. What did the corner tell you between rounds? Were you trying to get him out of the way and not give him a second chance? Was that the strategy here? Well, when I went back to the corner, my coach, Emmanuel Stewart, told me, uh, just take it easy, go in there. And he's ready to go, just go in there and finish him off. And you obviously did, as we'll see here from this replay in the second round. You had him backed up against the ropes, and Tim Ryan made the observation here. He was going simply out of instinct, and in a matter of seconds, down he goes. You hit him with an awesome right. Yes, I, uh, the shot that I hit him with, I was shooting, uh, shooting the left jab first uh, to the head, and then I faked the left jab to the body and came straight up with the right hand to the top. That was the shot there. And how did the right hand come out of the fight? I know you've had some problems with it in the past. Any difficulty? The right hand came? came out perfectly. No problem with the hand at all. All right. Now, what is next for you? Do you want to fight Marvelous Marvin Hagler? Right? You're smiling already. I can tell what the answer is going to be. But uh, what's next for you? Well, hopefully we can get Marvin Hagler. Um, we are, our plans are to move on to the middleweight division and take on Marvin Hagler because he's still there. Now you say the middleweight, then would you move into the light heavy?